Welcome to Shattered Reality with your hosts Kate Valentine and Farusha. Prepare to have your paradigms shifted and your truths questioned. And now, Shattered Reality. Shattered Reality. Shattered Reality. Shattered Reality. Well, hi, Farusha. We're back again. I know you enjoy slating every time. Yes. Uh, hi there, Kate. Uh, today is um, January. Uh, what is it? Nineteen. Right? Nineteenth. Yes. yes. <laughs> January nineteenth, twenty eighteen, and this is our first show of the new year, um, and it is our sixty-first show. Wow. So uh, we're really breaking. We're breaking records and milestones here, left and right. Unfortunately, we also had um, an upset today. Which yes, is indeed. The first. That's the first too. But we do hope Mr. Seal feels better, but he is, uh, unfortunately, uh, has a medical emergency, and he's not available at this particular time. Okay, that's correct. And uh, just in case everybody doesn't know who Mr. Seal is, I should mention (laughs) that um, it is Avril Seal of Texas, a professional writer uh, who has recently written a book uh, that was uh, published by our good friends at Anomalous Books, um, and um, it's called Monster Hike, and we're hoping that Mr. Seal is back in the pink very soon. Now, this is... So his, his subject, sorry to interrupt you, it was sure. cryptozoology or the hunt for Bigfoot, among others? Well, uh, I think his primary interest in the area of cryptozoology is Bigfoot, and it's kind of interesting to me because um, although the Kate Valentine UFO show, which preceded mm-hmm. um, Shattered Reality, on which I was a guest but not a co-host. Um, there, Quite a mistake. No, no, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. But um, in any case, uh, on that show, uh, Kate, my, my partner here, she had interviewed several individuals uh, regarding a variety of of cryptozoological creatures, including the the Flatwoods monster, uh, which is the one that and I best Mothman. remember. Oh, Mothman! Yes, yeah. indeed, Mothman. Yeah. Uh, Mothman is one that really kind of interests me quite a bit. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's kind of. The, I think what interests me is the eeriness of Mothman. Um, oh, you mean a fifteen foot winged black thing with glowing red eyes? Yeah, that that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I find it a little frightening. Well, you know what you said about Mr. Seal? He felt that uh, if you had an intention or if you had faith in Bigfoot, you'd have more of an ability to find them. That's true. And I have a feeling Mothman is one of those events. I think in the area... Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm confusing him. That is not Flatwoods Monster. No. I'm sorry. I, I confused it for a second. But anyway, to stick to Mothman for right now... Uh, it was in an area, a geographical area, and people in that area were fairly convinced that this beastie existed. This Flatwoods monster, or, you, or uh, Mothman? No, no, Mothman. Mothman. I'm okay. still on Mothman. And okay. so maybe their belief in the existence of Mothman was what caused all those sightings. Uh, it's it's possible. I do believe that in term. terms of, of Mothman, there was a, a Native American... Uh, belief in a similar type creature, mm-hmm. um, but I guess uh, what I I wonder about what I wonder about here is uh, the flesh and blood quality of, of such things. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply I'm gonna simply um, go directly to my own. Um, Cryptozoological. Okay. Well, well, just experience. real quick. Okay, but, sure. but Flatwoods Monster actually was not a, a, a creature. It turned out to be almost, um, almost like a crashed uh, denizen of a flying saucer of some sort. And uh, what's his name? Frank Ficino. I can't, yeah, Ficino. Ficino. Yeah. yeah. Really, really delved into it and continued to delve into it to the point where he was quite convinced that there was an air war between the United States and alien ships in the early 50s. And uh, if you, uh, his title of the book was Shoot Him Down, a fascinating book. And um, 
he put a lot of good, solid investigative research into it. And uh, his book was based on facts and actual occurrences and was not um, by any means uh, brought about by any intention. Right. Uh, right. And there were some involvements, if I recall offhand, with a family that also saw this type of monster. So that was like not so much cryptozoological as I think alien. Yeah, something that landed here by mistake, and uh, as a uh, side effect of this war that was going on at the time. Well, it it it, it is. Uh, if I saw something that was, uh, as I believe the Flatwoods thing was about fifteen feet tall, mm-hmm. get mm-hmm. out of a. Um, a spaceship Mm -hmm. or some kind of a craft, Mm -hmm. whether it came from space or under Mm -hmm. the earth. I'd I'd be booking at that point. I'd be really booking quickly. Don't forget, too, this was in the early 50s when all the early sci-fi movies with the uh, really horrible uh, flying saucer themes. The Thing, The Thing with James Arness. What was the name of that one? Uh, where they had the film where the parents uh, and the kids saw the flying saucer land in the morning and the parents assured it was all a bad dream and he turned around. They had little holes drilled in the back of their neck. Remember that one? Oh, it was really, oh, it was really creepy. It creeped me out. But anyway, I'm sorry, we're way off the topic of cryptozoology. Okay. Okay, well, you know, so um, in terms of the flat, <laughs> Flatwoods monster, um, I... I don't have the knowledge you have about it, Kate, but I would say that is a creature, even if it was a creature from space, and mm. it, would, it would have scared the living bejesus out of me, frankly. Well, they found oil and stuff, and the family that saw it, was really fun. It was a funny story. It was like, um, you know, back West Virginia in the 50s, they're sitting on the porch, no TV yet, just sort of sitting there, and this thing they see us something on the other side of the hill, and they all go to investigate it. Mrs. May, I believe, was the name of the lady. And the neighborhood kids and the dog and the trips and up over the hill. Oh, <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, be careful what you wish for. And they see this thing, and they come back screaming and hollering, and there's a monster out there. But, you know, I, I think it was a mechanical thing. You you think uh, yeah. that, that it wasn't a breathing creature? No, you think no. it was it's a, a mechanical uh, sort uh, of a thing. Yeah, uh, uh, and an artificial intelligence mm-hmm. because it disappeared they didn't find it they i think it's whatever i mean flying so whatever it is came down and took it back up and got rid of the evidence well anyway i'm just as happy it's no longer here thank no, you no no it's not so i mean uh, we haven't had on on shattered reality uh any cryptozoology uh, writers no. prior to this. And as I was saying prior to us starting today, part of the reason uh, that is is that we are not big experiencers in the area of cryptozoology. So while we are not disbelievers, we are also by and large not believers, which is not to say that we don't think mm-hmm. that it's possible, but just we it it hasn't been shown to us uh maybe that's because we're in the new york metropolitan area and most of the cryptozoological creatures uh, only come out at night under the subway where we are not spending too much time like the pizza eating rat (laughs) like yeah like the (laughs) giant pizza eating rat however um i a couple of years ago i think it was back in 2005 i have to check my date on that i was on my way down to the monroe institute um and uh i was at a at a, sitting in a an airplane waiting to take off at newark airport and uh i saw a black butterfly at the window and i had a uh, reason for pause at that moment because I didn't know what a black butterfly was doing at the airport looking in my window. Were the engines running? Yeah. Hmm, that's <laughs> weird, too. It was weird. And uh, I, I, I was... Uh, uh, which air? You were at Newark? I was at Newark Airport. I was, I believe, taking off to go to Charlotte, North Carolina to change planes to then go to Charlottesville. So, so well, you weren't in a large jet then? I wasn't. Uh, at no, I, I would imagine Newark to Charlotte would be sort of a small me, medium. I, I, it wasn't a tiny, but it wasn't like a like twelve seat right, or something. Right, it was like it a was commuter. Like, like it a was commuter. like I would say. Now I have to remember this. I would say there were fifty people. Okay, uh, there's a commuter. fifty. 
Uh, it wasn't a tiny one. I've been on puddle jumpers. Mm -hmm. It definitely wasn't that. And uh, so this black butterfly is at the window, and I'm thinking to myself, is this a sign I shouldn't be flying? Should I just get up and say, <laughs> I have to get off this airplane now. I don't want to go. Uh, uh, was it flying or was it landed on the window itself? It was flying, but it came up to the window, mm -hmm. and it was at the window. Now, this it was, it was an all-black butterfly or moth, I, uh -huh. I, 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 but I Flying believe it insect, was a, a right. butterfly uh -huh. because it had its wings spread. It didn't, uh -huh. it didn't close like a moth okay. closes differently. And uh, I saw it for, for more than a minute, and I just decided I will, have, have, I will try yes. to have faith and go uh -huh. on this trip anyway. Well, then when I get to Charlotte and I get on the other plane, there is a large black butterfly. That's strange. And this one didn't come up to the window. This one was a distance away from the plane. But this butterfly was, I would say, wingspan and everything, six to eight inches. And I'm, I'm looking back. It's a fair size butterfly. Yeah, I'm looking back 12 years ago at least. So mm -hmm. I'm not, uh, but it was a big butterfly. And I think, oh, geez, this is very, very weird. And not a bird. Not a bird. Definitely okay. not a bird. I, 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 and not like smoke patterns. On the no, 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 okay. no smoke okay. patterns. This was a sunny day. It was clear. These were two. So now I've seen two black butterflies, and I'm. Yeah, that's a little um, off putting. Yeah, a little yeah. bit off. And I was going uh, to start a program the following day, and I stayed over at a friend's house in what's called the New Land. Uh, which is uh, some homes that were built around the Monroe Institute on land that was owned by Bob Monroe, I guess, and he sold it off. I, I could be wrong exactly right. on the legalistic of that. But anyway, there are a bunch of homes that are built in the, in the vicinity of the Monroe Institute, and that's called the New Land. And so I was staying with a friend at a house there, and uh, there was a terrace, a small terrace outside a little outdoor patio. And I was sitting on the patio. Uh, I was going to go eat dinner at some third person's house. There was some kind of gathering and people I kind of know, you know, not very well, but all friendly. And so I was sitting there waiting to go to the dinner. And there's a third black butterfly up by the eaves of the house. And I'm looking at the thing and I'm thinking, could that be a bat? Yeah, yeah, that's weird. And no, it wasn't a bat. Okay. It was an insect. It was black. Yeah. It yeah. looked like a butterfly. Yeah. And I, I, when I got back to my home uh, a week later, I looked in all the uh, books and online for butterflies, and there were no butterflies well, that fit yeah. that description. Yeah, and, and they don't hang around that long anyway. You know what I mean? So, mm, Well, you were saying earlier, too, about intentions right. and uh, creating things like right. culpas, which we'll go into a little later. Right. But maybe, uh, did you have, like, worrisome thoughts or had you I mean this was something you're looking forward to yeah I was looking forward to to not uh, nothing having, stressful or not really no mm. I mean it, it's it's something of a vacation and yeah. um I I wasn't uh, thinking any negative thoughts the mm. only thing uh, that uh, was uh on my mind after seeing these things was that the date was the date of my parents' wedding anniversary mm. and my godmother's birthday mm. happened to ha take place on the same day, but they wouldn't be sending me like uh, uh, a black butterfly, black images. You know, I mean, there's no reason for it. They mm. had nothing. Uh, certainly they wouldn't be thinking it was some horrible thing for me to be going down to Virginia and mm -hmm. meditating for a week, basically, which is what it comes down to. And it. you don't collect butterflies or anything. No, oh, so. I would never. I, well, like a friend of mine, her parents were very involved with uh, her father's involved with robins, and so one day in off season, there were about fifty robins in the backyard, and so she thought it was a message from her father. In that sense, you know, who he had passed on. Um, Birds are known to be messengers. Yeah, well, maybe in your case, it's a butterfly. I don't know. Well, the 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 name Farusha mm -hmm. is very close to the word for butterfly in Arabic. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. But, 
still, I don't see them all the time. Why on this, you know, why this one day of all, right. all days? Yeah. Okay, well, then why do sometimes people see UFOs? Sometimes they see Bigfoot. Sometimes, they, you know, this is one of these, you know, with um, what, for, Fourth, what was the guy's name? Fort, Charles Fort. 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 You know, all these anomalous occurrences. Uh, and supposedly, you know, like the famous one was, well, rocks don't fall out of the sky, and then they discovered meteors. But, uh, you know, all these anomalies, I mean, I, I think we were saying just before the show, well, why would somebody be interested in supernatural or paranormal or all these anomalous events? I think it's because everyone senses, just as you do with the butterflies, that all right, there is no um, typical explanation for it, but there is an explanation. I mean, you saw it. It was there. Yes. If it was, even if it was your imagination, you still saw something that was there. So why did you see it? Or why did you even think that you saw it? It doesn't matter whether you actually saw it or you think you saw it. It, it was, as far as you're concerned, it was there. So why? And, and there's no answer for that. I believe that um, the person who I was staying with also saw the third butterfly. So it wasn't really? just me. Yeah. And but, I'm, but I'm, why? You I, know I, I, mean? I have no it idea. And I think that when I was, when I left, before I left the Charlotte airport, I might have mm -hmm. pointed out the large butterfly in the mm -hmm. distance mm -hmm. to some person who was like sitting next to me. Right. But my, my memory, in yeah. honesty, yeah. it dims a little bit. So I don't sure. want to make any strange... Um, but, but I think that's why people get interested in these things, because they sense that there's a meaning behind it, which yes. they cannot find out what that meaning is or determine what it is. And... Um, and it's intriguing, you know. I, I mean, you know, if you were if you were on the plane and it was a piston engine, let's say, and it gave off of the puff of black smoke, you wouldn't even notice it. You figure, okay, the engine just burnt some gas, and there you go. Yeah. So the explanation is immediate. It's non-threatening, but you see a black butterfly, and yeah, I mean, if I were on a plane saw a black butterfly, I'd mm, I'd think twice about, about maybe. getting on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> Please excuse me, I would like to get off. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not feeling well. Can I get off? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think that's what interests people about it, and, and certainly with UFOs. And then I, I, that uh, there definitely have been, uh, without a question, objects that are seen, that are flying and are unidentified. And I guess it's fun, too, to speculate about what these things could be. Right, and we, we actually do not know factually definitely what they are since people come back, even people who are contactees, abductees, mm -hmm. um, and experiencers, which are the three words that are used to describe people who have close encounters of the third kind. Yeah. Um, uh, and they, <laughs> they don't agree on, on what it is because either because whatever it is lies to us, A, mm -hmm. or B, we misinterpret in our monkey mind um, like uh, the uh, quote-unquote alien could be given, giving the contactee the secrets of the universe, but the contactee with their monkey brain, and I'm not putting any particular contactee down, so I don't want any letters about that, but, <laughs> but the uh, human animal... Uh, with their um, monkey brain, uh, primate. Is, primate, 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 primate brain, brain. Mm -hmm. is not um, <laughs> is not is not getting the message correctly. Is <laughs> misinterpreting the well, message. Well, all right, all right. Well, that brings us back to Bigfoot. Okay, uh, I mean, certainly, if you're primed to be out there looking for Bigfoot and you see a 15 foot grizzly bear. Maybe that's what you think you're seeing, or 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 as you or as you say too. You know, it, again, it's intriguing. Like, I think myself, I think it is some sort of a land primate. You know, really, that that's a left, maybe even left over from the Neanderthals. Who knows? But it's out there. It knows very well if it contacts uh, human civilizations, it's in big trouble because right, right. it'll be hunted, killed, or exhibited, or something of that nature. And it understands that, but. And so it avoids it at all costs, and I'm sure it teaches its children never to go near anything like that, uh, like a human. But you still, you want to know if it's out there. 
Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. I mean, it could be. I mean, like the Yeti, some primate loose up in the Himalayas. Who the, I mean, who, how many people are in the Himalayas on a day-to-day basis? Uh. It, it, not probably <laughs> zip. And, and, you know, it could hide up there forever. And, and even northwestern Pennsylvania, all those hills and mountains. and uh, it's good. I think one of the most compelling stories mm-hmm. uh, that I have heard about a Sasquatch or uh, a a Yeti, more like a Yeti, uh, comes from uh, a village, I think, somewhere in um, just outside of Siberia in the former Soviet Union, and I don't know what country it would be now, but there was apparently one of these things living in the village for years and people there were there were samples of the fur that existed yeah, at one I remember, time now that you're talking i remember that story. and it lived with some woman or that yeah everybody in the town too didn't they? everybody in the town knew yeah. about it and everything and i would say that was probably the most compelling thing mm-hmm. offhand to me about a, a yeti but now uh, there seem they seem to be popping up all over the united states and canada or else mm-hmm. people say that they see them they're known by different names like Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Skunk Ape, all these uh, these different names. And um, uh, my jury is out. I mean, I don't have an opinion yeah, on m- it. Maybe they're a successful primate and they're starting to increase in numbers and that would increase the sightings. Oh, well, that would yeah. be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, well, not, I'm true. giggling, yeah. but it, it yeah. would be interesting. I... I have to wonder that people aren't interested in... We started to talk about how people might be interested in the supernatural or why they're interested in these anomalous things. And I believe that is because uh, on a certain level, uh, reality is not what it's cooked up to be. Right. We have what is called um, a, a kind of uh, agreed upon... Uh, a, consensual reality, a group Mm -hmm. consensual Mm -hmm. reality that um, certain laws of physics apply. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they don't. And that's why we find that interesting because as we are getting to learn from um, string theory, quantum physics, all the things that were discovered around 100 years ago, but most... Uh, scientists don't even consider uh, while they're going about their studies and their daily lives the idea that everything is is really an illusion and that we only see such a small band of electromagnetic radiation on the big spectrum and things could be coexisting with us right here in, in this room and we might not see them. And after all, even if we do see them, does it does any of, does any of it really exist? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, because you tend to uh, not believe it. Right. Right. And uh, all right. Well, this is a good time for us to contact uh, our listeners or our people who are tuned into this little podcast. Obviously, you're interested in the paranormal. Obviously, you're interested in the supernatural. So please write us a uh, write us an answer. Why are you interested? Let us know. And how do they do that, Fushia? Because you know me. I'm inept when it comes to this. Well, um, hopefully they can go on uh, any one of four interactive uh, places, which would be www. Dot. Dot. (laughs) I know Dot. (laughs) I named my dog Dot. (laughs) <laughs> shattered reality podcast.com okay. or shattered reality podcast.wordpress.com or 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 our um channel on youtube or our facebook channel which is a radio station channel because facebook doesn't have a podcast designation yet uh, which it hadn't had three years ago, and it still doesn't have, which I find to be mm-hmm. quite amazing. But we are Shattered Reality Podcast on Facebook. And, on And they can just type in their answer, right? Right. They can, they can speak to us on Facebook. They can speak to right. us on either of our two 
um, websites. They could even speak to us on iTunes or uh, on um, YouTube, I, on our YouTube channel, which is or, very or, active, or, actually. Or, or ESP, right, Farusha? I mean, you'll pick up on that, right? Oh, yeah, I'll pick yeah, up on okay. that. Yeah, okay, that's good. I'll pick up on that yeah, right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, <laughs> uh, if... if if you're so psychic, how come you don't know my mother's maiden name? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we Smith. Have, it was Smith. <laughs> uh, yeah, Smith and Jones. But really, we'd love to hear from you. You know, I mean, you know, we sit here chattering away. Da, 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 da. Is anybody listening? Who knows? But or why are you listening? I mean, wh what's got you involved in this stuff? Who the, I mean, why would you care as to whether or not there's a Bigfoot out there? You do care, or you wouldn't be listening. Uh, Avril Seal would not care, or he wouldn't write a book about it. Right. So there's got to be some compelling reason for you to be interested in this, or uh, what else did we talk about? God knows everything. But a lot but about it, UFOs, a lot about uh, ESP. Yeah. I, I think with you, all the topics that really that you uh, you're mostly concerned with are based around intention and consciousness. Consciousness, I think, is yeah. is the big um, is the big element mm -hmm. here. Um, we do have a very interesting letter ah, from okay. Mr. Freeman, who oh, has all-time favorite, all-time favorite of our uh, of our listeners. Yes. He's been listening to the Kate Valentine yeah. UFO show. He listened to Viewpoints with yeah. Kate Valentine, yeah. and now he's listening to me and Kate Valentine here on Shattered Reality Podcast. Mm -hmm. And um, Freeman's, I'm going to read his letter here okay. and uh, maybe you want to make a comment on this. Okay. Uh, hi, Farusha. Just wanted to respond to your comment about the way aliens might think. In essence, biological intelligence exists to direct efficient movement and actions by incorporating sensory input. From a scientific point of view, logic, reasoning, and rationality are universal as applied to problem-solving, investigation, and the scientific method for the development of technology and maths-based modeling. Uh, however, general reasoning, as applied by individuals, can often be used to justify any action or behavior, but may contain erroneous flaws of logic and incorrect assumptions. To put it crudely, there could be considered a difference in the application of rationality between the architects of technology and the users of technology. Rational decisions will include statistical outliers, uh, for example, statistically abnormal decision-making considered unethical, irrational, or unacceptable by society in general. This overlaps with concepts of justice, legal systems, and protecting the public. Abnormal thinking can result from biological dysfunctions, including genetic abnormalities and brain damage, or learned behaviors. Biological ET intelligence is likely to arise from universal evolutionary processes. Competitions for resources is likely to promote hunting as a winning strategy with the consequences of a natural sensory intelligence arms race. Individuals within a self-aware, technologically developing species will likely continue to exhibit inherited behaviors relating to self-preservation and basic needs as well as high-level behaviors such as altruism. We might also expect aliens to exhibit behaviors relating to interspecies cultures as well as fill-in-the-gap concepts provided by faith and various religious ideas. Abnormal behaviors are in some respects statistical, so one day we might define extreme behaviors in terms of the galactic norm for rational beings. Another aspect to consider is learning and education, the common subjects that any biological alien intelligence would teach subsequent generations. In practical terms, the necessary intelligence, skills, and knowledge required to function and thrive in a physical environment capable of supporting a tool-making species provide both a common frame of reference for all species and, and, influence, and influence cultures and behaviors. There may be more that we share in common 
than keeps us apart. Well, that's true, except that we have had hunters and uh, developed societies, for example, Egypt, ancient Egypt and ancient Rome, that never really got technologically inclined. And so, um, and yet they survived and uh, for their time. I mean, they were wiped out by something else, which I really don't want to go into at this time. But um, th- there may be, I was off, often thinking, what if there was no need in this planet Everything kills something, so it survives. We do not survive without killing something. And <clears throat> whether you're vegetarian or you're a bacteria, you kill something. You have to. Uh, there's always been a changeover of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus, and other odd elements. But what if, instead of um, a hair or skin, we had chlorophyll-producing uh, uh, cells? And so all we had to do to, uh, for nutrition was to go out in the sunlight, inhale some um, uh, CO2 and give off some oxygen and, you know, be a happy little, but still been mobile. In other words, a mobile plant. Uh, what Walking would that, trees. Well, yeah, well seriously, what, what, uh, then there would be no need to kill. Right. There would be no need to hunt. There would be a lot of time to think. And then this is where I think you come in, Ferusha, uh, that rather than develop, uh, how would you say, uh, material technology, they could then uh, develop an intentional technology where anything that they needed would be supplied just by their imagination. And, uh, and a, as you said, too, like a societal uh, intentionality, and, uh, you know, so I, I'm thinking alien intelligence would not be quite what you'd expect. What, what he's discussing is what I would prefer it to be, such as like a Klingon type or a Romulan. But um, if you remember on one of the old Star Trek movies, there was a, um, a planet where they landed and the, uh, il- the inhabitants of that planet were all shepherds. And they tended their flock, but they were pets. They were not uh, food. Mm-hmm. And um, they were very simple people. And both the Klingons and uh, Kirk were trying to save them. And they refused all help from either party. And they said that they were in no immediate danger. And Kirk kept saying the Klingons are going to take over. And this leader of these people said, no, they can't. And, and they, they just didn't understand it. And what happened was... Uh, through mental prowess, they just shut down the weapons on both uh, both ships. And so both the Klingon and Kirk looked at each other and go, well, what do we do now? <laughs> you know, I mean, these people just won't fight, and they can't be attacked. So what do we do now? Leave them alone. Was, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, think, I think it might be something like that. Um, uh, um, certainly, they, obviously, it could have evolved into you know, again, a similar species to ours. But I think we're going to be very, very surprised. And um, I know um, in a prior letter from Mr. Freeman, he said, I was thinking that maybe UFOs were from a different uh, civilization on this very planet, and he thought that that was uh, not likely because civilizations are messy, but not necessarily so. And and I have a... you know, I just have a hunch that uh, prior to the flood, there was another civilization on this planet that was completely wiped away and that was not technological, which is why we find no evidence of them other than things like the pyramids and well, huge, huge um, things. Well, I, I could speak to that for a moment um, because uh, there have uh, there has recently uh, been a lot of evidence for the idea that there was a cataclysm uh, similar to the flood or or the flood. I mean, yeah, uh, I'm pretty uh, sure there was. Uh, and, and that that happened about 12,000 years ago. And um, now we're beginning to see some archaeological evidence, particularly in Turkey and the site of Gobekli mm, Tepe. Right. Um, and that these are uh, sort of... Uh, Temples uh, that were built on on a hillside, and there are uh, more than twenty of these stone circles and advanced carving, uh, indicating a, a civilization 
that was at least as advanced as the Egyptians, and it's unknown why these people buried their quote-unquote temples. And um, there are other indications under the water uh, in places like the Gulf of Mexico, Japan, uh, off the coast of India. There are a lot of like really clear uh, signs that there were advanced civilizations prior to this flood. But since this flood happened, these places are now still underwater as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they're not coming up anytime soon. So it's going to take some deep sea divers uh, to, to look at what this civilization, these, these not civilization, but civilizations consisted of prior to 12,000 or prior to 10,000 BC, prior to 12,000 years ago, basically. And um, in fact, uh, geologically, I believe a uh, Robert Schach Mm -hmm. was amongst the people who were able to determine pretty much within the span of a few years when uh, this cataclysm came about. Mm -hmm. So there, there very well may have been um, a, a, a civilization prior to... Uh, well, there definitely was a civilization prior to the Egyptians, apparently. Right. Um, now, whether or not this was a civilization of humans... We don't really know. I mean, I, maybe it was the big feet. You know, could, could have been. I'm giggling, but it could it, it could really? have been. Uh, but that was the first part. The sec. That's my first answer mm -hmm. to what you said. My second answer, uh, more or less, to you and Freeman, is that I agree with him. Mm -hmm. In so f well, let's let's take a step back because I'm a big proponent of the idea of panspermia. And um, that's why we had uh, 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 our fellow from... Oh, go ahead, say it. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Wick, Wick for Shangri or... <laughs> John for Wickarama singer. <laughs> okay, I said it. Well, no, but we had a guest on um, uh, last year who... A wonderful gentleman, A, by a really, way. really nice fellow who was talking about sending balloons up and finding some some creatures that probably oh, were living I was up. I was thinking of the other guy from India who was the ah, damn, uh, who was the English fellow with panspermia, you know, the astronomer. And, oh, yeah, uh, Sir Fred Hoyle. Yeah, yeah. But well, he's been dead for quite a while. No, no he, but... If but, he came on our show, we would have proof of life after death. <laughs> ooh, scoop. <laughs> scoop, yes, scoop. <laughs> Okay, but uh, but yeah, well, all right. Well, was was uh, well. Look, okay, panspermia. But well, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't finish. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, well, hurry I'm up. Sorry, I'll hurry up. <laughs> um, <laughs> panspermia. Uh, I, as I say, I'm a big proponent of panspermia, and I do agree with with um, our friend Freeman here when he discusses the idea of a similar biological entity coming from space it mm -hmm. may have developed as i had said at on on at the uh, at, at the ufo uh, event that they could have developed along similar lines right. but because so many of the things that are seen in our skies and so many of the experiences are ineffable to us. In other words, something shows up in the sky in one place and then turns up in the sky a, a second later, a, a distance that couldn't be traversed by a terrestrial vehicle, etc. I am led to believe that perhaps some of these visitors are not in the same bandwidth as we are. In other words, they may be a physical beings somewhere in the universe, but they're they're not in the same small bandwidth that the human species has come to see and recognize because we see such a small little so, part of of and what we see if in fact, if you're going to get into it, isn't really what's there. It's what our eyes interpret it as. Mm -hmm. um, the reality of what is there. Um, is something that I'm afraid that I don't have the, the scientific chops to completely discuss here, but um, I, I, I guess that we could look into it. However, 
I don't see any reason that if the entities, even biological entities, are coming from another point okay. in space, that they would uh, that they would follow these guidelines if if they were. Um, if they were not on the same bandwidth, because what would appear to us, it would appear like magic, when in fact they're just on a different bandwidth. Right. Well, you, you could do that. You, you could, or, or you could do, you could uh, follow Stephen Hawking one step further. And if technology, you know, back in the days of SETI, they were trying to discover radio. Uh, signals, and then they realized, okay, well, that's not going to work. So then they went to light signals. Well, Hawking now says, with uh, all developed technologies, eventually they will hit on computers. Eventually, they will hit artificial intelligence. There very well may be a takeover of the silicon beings, the artificial intelligence. It may have happened already, for all we'd know, because they're in charge of all the media. So they could let us, they could tell us whatever they're going to tell us, and we'd believe them. But again, with panspermia, how hard would it be for them to put a little silicon chip uh, on a tiny little piece of rock and send it off into space and a million of them? And if they landed in the right place where DNA could be created, they'd create it and the DNA would transform into whatever creature would be suitable for that particular environment. So, yeah, I, I think panspermia is a reality, and I think it's the eventual outcome of a technological society. But, okay. Uh, uh, but, so, but still, you know, Mr. Freeman and I would probably disagree on some of that, too. Okay. I, I know we'll get a letter from him. I, I, He's I, writing even now. I hope, <laughs> I hope we, we do get a letter from him. <laughs> yeah, but from you, too. Come on out there, guys. I mean, come on. Stop being so Well, lazy. he has had, I, I don't know why, but he has contacted me several times and he has some difficulty posting on our site and I don't know why that is. It's uh, the EVPs. That's what it is. That's it might exactly be. What it, is. it might be. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. Um, but in any case... They're afraid of him. Could be. Mm. Going back to mm -hmm. um, the entire discussion about uh, why people should be interested... Yeah in uh, paranormal experiences is because it shakes up this very pedestrian view of reality, which is not really... Boring. It's boring. It's boring, but it's not really real anyway. It's only real because we allow it to be. And um, I'm... Do you think most people sense that too? I, I think they do. I think that most people sense that there's something more. Mm -hmm. um, but so many people are little cogs in the wheel yeah. and they just perform their, they get up because the man next door gets up in the morning and, you know. Well, they like to eat too. They yeah. like to eat, but they're, they're, there's a tremendous amount of societal conformity Oh yeah, that well, is is uh, that occurs and groupthink, and I think that. But that would be intention again, Bruce. You know what you're saying is everybody thinks the same thing at the same time, so it, it's it's group intention too to some extent. But what what is that when you get expelled from the group, uh, outcast? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I. I, I you know the word I'm trying to think of, like, like uh, in the Amish societies. Yes, and in, in, in Switzerland, too. Oh, gosh. Uh, oh. 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 All right, we're have suffering. Uh, okay. Oh, but I do remember the name of the guy from SETI from last time, Seth Shostak. Oh, good. Yeah, good. so, okay. uh, so good. He, good. His, name will, his name will not die in our memories. Oh, that's true. Seth Shostak. Which is hard to say, Seth Shostak it's, from Seti. It's, it's easier Seth than Chandra Shostak. <laughs> no, not to me, because you have to say Seth Shostak from Seti. Oh, what the hell? When you're excluded from a group, are you shunned? Not Sh shunned. Well, there is shunning. But I was thinking uh, well, of shunning. But there's something else. Um, anyway, that that that's horrible. For I mean, people in a small community, and yeah. it is because it, it, in terms of shunning, the the, the um, Oh, the practice bad. of shunning is when the person comes, you just turn your back to them and you just don't acknowledge them at mm -hmm. all. Well, and that's why there's a lot of research not being done in UFOs and ghosts and things like that because you're made out to be a fool. 
uh, for believing in things that the group does not believe in, and so you're shunned by the group. I would, you know, who I, I would like to get on as a mm. guest because his specialty is bursting the bubble that is um, bursting the bubble that is um, um, group think, mm -hmm. and that is um, David Ike. Oh, oh, wow! You talk about bursting bubbles, and he um, mm. he has a he has his own way of looking at things that isn't the group thought. And mm. I don't necessarily agree with everything he says, mm. but I still think that it is extremely prescient in many cases. It, well, what he does do is open you up to thinking outside the group think. I'm not right. going to say the outside the box, but outside group thinking. And he's the guy with the blue bloods, the real blue bloods. He's that, the guy that with the royal the, family actually do have blue blood because they're reptilians. But yeah, he's got some reptilian um, ideas mm -hmm. about uh, what's going on. But I, I don't think that's the main thesis of what he's talking about today, which is more about um, not accepting uh, the uh, the common uh, group reality, and that if you begin to be aware that there's something else, then things start to happen, which is something that we, uh, we would have dealt with today with Mr. Seal, mm -hmm. I suspect. Mm -hmm. But then you get into the idea that um, perhaps uh, just the human mind alone can create a tulpa. Well, that's what you said, the intention, right? The intention, and, and we go to what, something which I believe was called the Schofield Experiments, where they uh, invented this character whose name I think was Patrick. Uh, I could be wrong about this. Somebody will have to correct me since I'm not speaking from notes here today. But um, they created this, this fictional character that lived in a past time and the the character began to answer them on the Ouija board hmm. and they began to get answers hmm. from this character that didn't exist hmm. prior to th they made him up okay and um and then um it, he took on a a personality of his own and continued to exist on some level really? yeah and um a woman traveling in India a, a, Maybe in the 20s, she created Tulpa too, and this is something that is known about in uh, Tibetan and Indian mysticism that you can create uh, a being. And if you think about it, if you were ever scared as a child uh, mm -hmm. in your room alone at mm -hmm. night and you began to see something coming out from underneath mm -hmm. your closet, mm -hmm. it could be very real to you. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, if it's real enough, perhaps, uh, you know, your little brother can see it too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Didn't we have a kiss on that young lady? I forget her name now. Uh, she was traveling uh, with her aunt or something to a temple and she was cured or oh okay i, I forget i've now. forgotten that but i think she had something of a tulpa experience too but, but well so what about bigfoot would you want to see one do you care um i i don't know uh if i would want to see one i i, I don't it's not high on my priorities list of things well, i want to do because i don't I don't know how dangerous Bigfoot might be. I don't think at all. I, I There's never been any stories of him harming. Well, look, I mean, for example, I live in a very busy, busy road in suburbia. Okay. And I looked out my window and I saw a bear up a tree. And I know it was a bear because the dog was barking at it. It was so cute. And he was loose all throughout the town. And the police eventually sort of anesthetized him and let him loose in a park. But um, that was about as close as I'd like to see Bigfoot. Okay. Um, we'll put in an order okay. for you to see Bigfoot up a tree. Okay. So where it can't get you. And the <laughs> I call the police. Oh, oh, oh poor yeah. Bigfoot. Oh, I'm being with a lot of people who are seeing a lot of things pretty soon then, you know. But uh, all right. Well, what, what, uh, what else? What other cryptids are there? Uh, well, should we bring Bill into the conversation? Yeah, we should. Uh, no, no, look, he's so shy. Our, our but engineer. We'll just, we'll just say what he saw. Yes. Uh, yes, which is a flesh-covered bird, Bill? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And where'd you see it? Where did you see it? Up on Route 9W. 9W. 
Was it up like really up a little bit north, like in the Hudson Valley? No, no. No? It's in Alpine. Alpine? Oh, yeah. In Alpine, New Jersey, mm -hmm. on Route 9W, mm -hmm. you saw a bird that w w had flesh instead of feathers, and it was orange, you say? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. How large a bird was it? Like eagle, robin, a hawk, hawk size. Yeah. yeah. Did it have a face that you remember? Yeah, it kind of didn't. Have, it didn't really have a... Uh, like a beak or... Like a beak. Yeah. It had a, uh, a, a face of a, of a mammal, a mammalian face, you would say? Yeah, so. mm. Interesting. But see, now that's what I mean by anomalous. You saw it. It was there. But what the hell different? Uh, what is it? You know, I mean, there's no real answer, no ex and you'll never know. You'll never know. Yeah, it didn't really drive me all that crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it should have driven me more crazy than it did, I think. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. But don't you find, too, anomalous events stay in your mind? Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, they hit you. Well, no, right? Exactly. But it hits you immediately that this is not not what we consider normal, that it's outside the range of events that we typically would see. And as I mentioned before, too, it's mm -hmm. like a very strange vibe. A strange vibe. That's what I mean. You I do. Uh, yeah, they these strange things sort of draw you into them before you actually see them. It's almost like a lot of sightings and UFOs. First, you get the feeling that something's there, then you look, and then you see it. Right. Looking at that, that particular spot. thing at that spot, yeah. Well, I, I remember driving here less mm -hmm. than uh, half a year ago and seeing uh, a, a flock of wild turkeys, some of which were huge. Well, they are big. They, they are were big. huge, and, and I thought this was suckers too. This yeah. was a really big group yeah. of wild turkeys. Yeah. I'd seen them prior to that. But let's go back to birds for okay. for a minute and um, speak to the idea that many people see birds. Uh, that are not necessarily anomalous birds in that that they're regular robins or mm -hmm. hawks or whatever, but in in conjunction with the loss of uh, of life, um, and that sometimes uh, people see birds after their loved ones have died, and the bird will try to get in the window or behave in a way that uh, birds don't usually behave. Not uh, you know really like they're from from another planet or mm -hmm. a cryptid or something, but these are regular birds and they behave in unusual ways um, to uh, display uh, some kind of a contact from the departed. Uh, when I was uh, disposing of my parents' ashes uh, in several different places, I saw pairs of ducks huh that f uh, that uh, came by in, in, in different places where you would not expect to mm -hmm. see pairs of ducks. And um, so that was kind of meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I hear this over and over again from clients mm -hmm. that birds show up. And mm -hmm. frankly, uh, I saw a huge flock of crows uh, descend upon a yard um, where... Uh, a woman was very sick in the home, and uh, the next day she was she was deceased. Mm. Um, and I don't know if one thing had anything to do with the other, and I'm not going to make that. Um, well, there was the cat in the nursing home that time too. Remember that? Uh, every it was an uh, uh, assisted living hospice type situation, and when one of the patients or the uh, the people residents would uh, suddenly show up. Uh, all of a sudden, this cat would be found sitting on its lap, and the next day that person would be gone. So there must have been a sense that the cat was picking up, too. Yeah, and it's hard to say. I mean, people have surmised about that, that um, in, uh, like, I don't know, necropsy may not be the right word. You would know better than me. But when the, the body is undergoing the dying process, that it may exude a uh, a smell that is undetermined to us. We mm -hmm. can't smell it as mm -hmm. readily as as an animal might, and yeah. that the cat might have been picking up on um, 
some kind of a chemical oh, yeah. reaction. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, uh, and as opposed to the cat simply having ESB, which of course is equally possible as far as I'm concerned. Well, yeah, very possible. Well, uh, did we sort of fill in the spaces here? Or? Yeah? Oh, another, okay. All right. Oh, good. We got another six minutes. Okay. Well, let me see. What's some other favorite supernatural topics that we can smash? Um, hmm. Well, there's UFOs, there's cryptology. Well, we, we, we haven't made, we haven't weighed in on, on uh, well, well, this week, because there is one topic which is mm -hmm. very much on everyone's mind right mm -hmm. now. What's going to happen with this To the Stars Academy? What's going to happen with Leslie Kane's adventures with mm -hmm. the, the New York Times? Mm -hmm. And when is the other shoe going to fall? Mm -hmm. As far as government disclosure, well, uh, uh, everybody's promising. You know, I mean, I'm not. I, I have. Mm -hmm. I, I. I hope that they do come through. Mm -hmm. I hope that uh, Hal Putoff and uh, uh, Luis Elizondo and uh, uh, Blink. Uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Tom DeLong and oh, okay. Leslie Kane and all these characters. I hope. I hope. That the next shoe does drop because I'm waiting. I don't know about you. Are you waiting? Yeah, I'd love to know. I, you know, I, I honestly, I told you, I think is, I don't think the government has anything to disclose because I think they're as much in the dark as we are. I, I've always thought that, and um, I, I just don't think, uh, I, I don't think they know. I really don't. Well, what does, what is it that Bob Bigelow claims he has of uh, these um, metallic? Oh, pieces. Pieces. From Area yeah. What? What is that's that's the one that's the one outlier here because everything else uh, fits within the paradigm which we've seen UFOs mm. before. They move in anomalous ways. They um, it, 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 well, if if they were alien, they came from another planet. Are they actually going to use metal? You know what I mean? It, it just doesn't. I mean, yes and no. I mean, uh, it just doesn't ring true. I'm sorry. There's just something. I wish I could explain it better, but it just there's just something missing in that equation. the The other thing too, as far as Bigelow goes, uh, he's definitely interested in it, as is Elon Musk. I'm sure because there have been proven forms of propulsion that are far out outweigh anything that we have regardless of whether they're alien or another civilization or whatever but lord knows i mean there's something out there what, what are you looking out the window for Bruce? it's coming in it's yeah coming you're freaking in. me out <laughs> <laughs> no i you know there what i find interesting about the, the the possible metal pieces and so forth is that there have been reports of uh, kind of um, things left behind that involve uh, certain isotopes of metals, including uh, large amounts. I believe now somebody's going to slap me down for this because I'm, you know, I'm not speaking mm -hmm. scientifically, but uh, certain isotopes of metals that contain unusual amounts of magnesium in it, mm -hmm. and isotopes of metals not found on the earth, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. So. Since these things exist, um, and people have reported them and taken them to the lab for analysis and so forth, and no one's come up with a sourcing for this. Yeah, but you know, if they're so advanced, how come there's so many crashes? I mean, were they well, just bad enough. drivers? I mean, that, I, that's I, uh, something else. That's uh, no, I, it, it's that something. begs the imagination. All these crashes, I don't, I don't get it. Mm -hmm. I don't get it either. You come across the universe to come here yeah, and, exactly. and, and, and get baffled by, you know, uh, rudimentary radar. Uh, yeah, and it sounds like, you know, they hear what, in a, in a, in a Ford T model, something or other? No, I, that's why I said there's something that doesn't add up there, which is why I think they come from this planet where it would make sense. You know, that they would then have metal craft with different propulsions, but I, 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 and they might, and they could exist in a different bandwidth somehow, which would explain why they but go over that? these these nuclear weapon sites and shut down the the missiles and so forth. Yeah, well, there was always that one up here in uh, Rocky Rocky Point. What's that one on the Hudson, the nuclear power plant? Oh, the point. 
Indian Point. Indian, Indian Point, Point. Yes. yeah. Where the one guy was so freaked out because he swears up and down, I mean, he's a responsible man, that an alien came right through the wall and told him to shut it down. A little one of the little gray ones, and uh, I mean, the man was left somewhat shaken. And <laughs> well, one has to wonder if you have an experience like that. Yeah. I mean, just taking it on face value. Yeah. Let's yeah, say so, we just yeah. absolutely believe it. Yeah. This is going to destroy your mind. Mm. On a certain level. It's going to destroy your mentation. The, the way you see the world. But it's also going to destroy your mentation for well, quite some time to come. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he was not a happy guy after that. They put him on leave. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. This is not, but, not funny. But, You're funny, but the, the situation. No, funny. it's not funny. But, you know, I mean, I'm pretty sure the man saw something like that. And so... Okay, so then you as a person, uh, which is why we want you to write in, as a person, you would then have to rethink your whole reality. And not just you, but your neighbors, you know, the local newspapers. Everyone would have to go back and say, oh, well, maybe aliens do exist. Oh, oh, well, well then we have to reset our whole uh, uh, view. Of the. Uh, it must have been like the people around Copernicus, you know. Oh, Oh, you mean we do revolve around the sun? Oh, crap. Now we got to go back and redo all these books and right, stuff, right, you know? Right, yeah. So I, I think that's another reason. That, you know, you're right. I, it, it's like society think. You know? Well, I, I, I think the reason why I personally got into the businesses that I've been in and doing this is because... I never really, and this is going to sound like I ought to be committed, mm -hmm. but I never. Oh, oh. Re <laughs> she should be. <laughs> <laughs> I never really had mm -hmm. a strong grasp of reality. Mm -hmm. I was always expecting something to occur. Mm -hmm. Like I was always expecting the guy to come walking through the wall. Really? Even as a child. I mean, I didn't, I didn't have faith in mm -hmm. reality and I didn't have any overwhelming reason not to have faith in right. reality I right. mean I got right. up in the morning I ate my uh, right. Cheerios I went to grammar school you right. know right. Uh, public school everything that everybody else did right. but I didn't have a real faith that the sun was going to rise tomorrow basically mm. I was expecting at all times the hand to come through the wall really yeah mm. and uh, and that's uh, that's just my um, my own um, little no, no, I didn't have that feeling. No. Well, this yeah. was me all throughout yeah. my life. Yeah, never no, was... really trusted um, uh, the three, the three or four D reality. Mm -hmm. I can't explain to you why. Well, maybe you had a vision of it. You know, you keep harping about this other dimension, and I yeah. keep telling you that it's a mathematical construct. There are no other dimensions, but I know what you mean. You don't mean the actual dimension. You just mean a different time and place that coexists. You and... say there are no other dimensions, but well, I'm not, told not, that not, 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 not I, I know sense. what. You, uh, yeah, the, 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 it's I'm semantic that, with us. It's yes, semantic. It's, it's a semantic thing. I so, I think I that there are right. just so many realities, so many uh, co uh, uh, coexisting realities, most of which we're not aware of okay. on our daily life. And whether I, you know, was a little more aware as a child, my father certainly was in that category. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's a familial thing, and he never. He never had a real strong grasp of this 4D yeah. reality, though well, he he worked his whole life as yeah. a you know a, yeah. a blue collar worker right. and uh, uh, you know basically doing well, engineering he performed type work. well within this dimension. Yes, he did right. engineering type work and uh, you know was straight pretty straightforward, but uh, mm -hmm. yet uh, did not have a great deal of faith in. Well, well, just just what we say too is like uh, you know ESP and so on. Like certain people have different antennas to pick up different things, and maybe you have an antenna that you know sort of picks up signals from these other realities from time to time. Yes, maybe. Yeah. Or maybe I'm just nuts. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, um, we here at Shattered Reality mm -hmm. uh, would love for you to write in and suggest guests that you might like to see. Mm -hmm. uh, generally speaking, we do not interview claimants. That is, people that claim strange powers, unless it's been demonstrated to us. 
uh, by and large, we do not interview claimants. Other than that, we are very interested in people who are studying anomalous phenomena of all sorts. And we would like to hear from you um, perhaps some guest suggestions, some thoughts on our shows. Uh, we do have a variety of ways to get in touch with us, including our Facebook page, which is Shattered Reality Podcast, and it's listed under the radio heading in Facebook. It's, a, it's under radio. Uh, in addition, we have two websites, uh, one of which is shatteredrealitypodcast.wordpress.com. The other is shatteredrealitypodcast.com. We have a number of our shows up on um, iTunes and also on YouTube, and we are adding more every week. And once again, we would like to send our Best healthy greetings to Mr. Avril Seal, whatever has occurred to him today, and extend an invitation for him to come back in the future. So do you have anything else to say there, Kate? No, I, I think that sort of wraps it up very nicely, except I would also like to extend my best wishes as well to Mr. Seal. Seal. Okay. Anything, anything from your corner there, Mr. Bill? Here. Good okay. over there. Um, so I guess that means goodbye from, from shattered, shattered reality. reality.